how did All Saints go, like, you know, I didn't realise at that time that I was targeting the equivalent of Gen Z and Millennials, what people want. It, it, you take inspiration from the younger kids that you surround yourself with. There's no designer in the world that just sits in a room on their own drawing pictures. Back in those days, there weren't that many really cool brands out there. You would just throw a party and invite everybody there. Wow, who's this new store that's got 300 people trying to get in it, I'm kind of like all of a sudden running a in business. How the hell am I going to keep this up? Why did you decide to sell? Hello and welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. This week, I revisit my conversation with the creator and founder of All Saints, Stuart Trevor. I asked Stuart about what the reason was behind the crazy wild success in the beginning, how he grew the brand and why eventually he decided to sell the business. If you're a fan of All Saints, and want to have a sneak peek behind the scenes of the early days of All Saints, or you want to grow a brand of your own, then tune in. Please like, follow, and subscribe to Anatomy of a Leader. I kick off by asking Stuart how All Saints became so wildly successful so quickly. So how did All Saints go, like, you know, like, and I said, well, I used to get these vintage leather jackets and I'd send them to the factory and I'd get them to make them and, and now I'd... Like they'd come in and they'd be all stiff, so I thought, fuck it, I'll put them in the washing machine. I washed them and took them out, hung them up to dry, and then put them on when they were dry. And they were really, you know, a bit more crumpled. And I thought they were a bit hard, so I got olive oil and I put it back in the machine with olive oil. Come out, it's all beautifully soft. And but I quite like the hard one, so I'd do like a hard version and then I would do a soft version. And, and they'd go, yeah, 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 the, I understand that, yeah, leather jackets are... I don't mean it like... I mean, how did you... I mean, loads of people had loads of really nice clothes. I mean, your leather jackets were extremely nice and well, yes, I'll give you that. But it, it, that wasn't... And I'm like, all oh, right, sorry, I, now I know what you mean. Um, so, yeah, what we would do is say we would open a shop in Liverpool or, or Manchester or Nottingham and we would take this sort of derelict shop and we would, you know, build it and open it and put the clothes in. So I, I would, you know, find a really cool-looking person from that city and and employ them and say right you're going to manage the shop and you know maybe they used to manage one of the other ones or that they were a friend of a friend that i knew from nottingham or whatever i don't know um and then they would have friends of theirs and they would come down and we produced like a flyer and i'd say right listen go down to the local university or you know college or whatever and hand out these flyers and and and, and tell these kids to come to this launch party um and there's going to be free beer and there'll be, you know, music playing and discounts and things like that. And I didn't realise at that time, this was, you're talking 20 years ago. Um, I didn't realise I was targeting the equivalent of Gen Z and millennials. Uh, I was doing it because I knew that students will turn up for a free beer. Uh, and of course they did turn up and, they, and it was mobbed. And, and of course anyone else that was working in any other retail store would come and go, wow, who's this new store that's got 300 people trying to get in it and and then you know it kind of set that store on the on you know put, put it on the map and um and then they would come back the next day but, they, but these students as well they would buy things like t-shirts um at 30 40 quid or whatever and, and belts studded belts and different things like that and then of course three years time when they graduate they're earning 30 40 grand a year the first place they would go is all saints and they would spend a thousand pound a month and uh and there was hundreds of them in you know Nottingham and Liverpool and Manchester and and and, and that's how the business went because we would and when then when we'd have you'd have the launch party but then every like not every single month but every couple of months we would do the last Thursday of the month we would rotate it around the country we would do a, a party like a launch party or a, you'd get like a new leather jacket coming or whatever or a new range of jeans or something like that coming and you you would just throw a party, invite everybody there. So we would hold events. It was a bit, and that, that was another good thing about having your own shops is that you, you have like, it's almost like you, you, you know, being when you're in a band and, and you go out touring and all that, it's like owning your own, your own venue. It's your you, stage. You can have a, yeah, it's a stage. And you can have a, you can have a gig every night if you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the last Thursday of the month is good because it's, everybody gets paid and they want to spend money. They want to go out and, cheer themselves up or whatever and, and that's kind of like how all saints went like that so do you think you were very astute and understanding of what's happening currently <laughs> in terms of you know the like the cool kids like what are they doing what's you know just being really sort of on 
keeping your finger on the pulse with what was going on at, at the that time? Point? Well, yeah, because, well, I'd ha- I would have, you know, younger kids that would be working for me. So even, you know, I mean, I started All Saints at 28. Uh, so I was maybe 30 to 35 years old. But I would be employing, you know, younger kids of 18, 20. And they would be, you know, um, going out a lot. And, and some of them were in bands. The, the, some of the um, kids that worked in All Saints back in those days um, formed bands, like kids that were in the shop. Uh, one, one of them was formed by, it was quite kind of funny, I had, my uh, son was born when I was about 35 and I needed a nanny and I asked a girl that was working for me um, as, a, you know, retail director um, or, you know, overseeing all the shops if uh, her, her brother had come over. He was just a young 16, 17-year-old kid uh, from Denmark uh, and he was at uni or college in Denmark and I asked her can you give him this poster that you know we're looking for a, a nanny uh, and we thought you know maybe a young girl will come over and want to learn English and can come and live with us and we didn't really have any money at the time so we thought well they come and live with us learn English look after the kid as a week and work but mm-hmm. uh, it's quite nice we, we lived in a really cool loft in in Shoreditch and and I asked her about a month later like you know would would, uh, did your brother put that poster up? She went, she goes, I'm a bit embarrassed about it. And I went, why? She goes, well, he didn't put the poster up. I went, why? She goes, he wants to do it. I went, oh, right, OK, well, that's great. I thought, man, Manny, that's good. <laughs> so uh, he came and moved in with us. Mm-hmm. He ended up, he used to sit at home drumming on the table. At, and I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm a drummer. I'm like, are you? He says, yeah. And I went, why don't you bring your drums over? So he brought the drums over and with the other kids in the shop, he, he, they, they formed a band called The Rakes and, and, and they ended up having, like, you know, top ten hit. And Amazing. With a 22 grand job in the city. Back in those days, there weren't that many really cool brands out there. Um, so, yeah, I, we, would, we would end up in every city that we went to. The staff would end up like, almost like rock stars in, in, in Nottingham or whatever. We, if I ever went up there, they, we, they would take me to the local, like, the, the best, the coolest bar or you know, club or whatever, but they would be sending over bottles of champagne and they were like, all saints were, were, you know, these kids would, I'm like, are they just doing that for me? And they're like, no, they do it every weekend. They want, they, they want us to be in their bar Mm -hmm. because that makes this bar seem cool. So yeah, we, we, we would end up having like, you know, lots of really cool young kids that came to work for us. And then I would, you know, of course, ask them what were they into and what did they like? And they used to laugh at me and say, why are you asking me? Like, you're the founder of All Saints. And I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't design every single thing of myself. You know, I asked young people what they're doing and what they like and, and then kind of, like, go away and put the collection together or, you know, that, that's kind of how it works. You know, that's how, you know, no, there's no designer in the world that just sits in a room on their own drawing pictures and Doesn't happen clothes. in a vacuum. Doesn't, no, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Mm. It's, you absorb things from you know, a younger... Because I'm selling to, you know, younger people as well. So I want to know what... And, and older people that are 35 to 50, they don't want to look like a, an older person who's 35 to 50. They want to look like a young, cool 20-year-old who's out having fun and, you know, living an exciting life sort of mm. thing. So even... So you, you're better to aim at that kind of um, demographic. And, and, and then... You know, the, the older people will, will buy into that and all that. I mean, of course you have, you know, your basics, your staples and, and things like that, and that's what you end up making all the money from. But, um, mm. but yeah, as far as, like, a, an image or um, having a, an idea about, you know, what people want, it, you, you take inspiration from um, the younger kids that you surround yourself with, yeah. With it being such a huge success and, you know, doing so, so well... Why did you decide to sell? People ask me this all the time. We, I didn't need to. Um, we were, we'd, we'd gone from, you know, this small, independent, you know, designer label selling to other people to uh, having uh, 13, 14 of my own shops, including, like, the, 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 the last shop I opened was uh, in Spitalfields, um, the big one on the corner there opposite Spitalfields Market. They were doing, they were all doing 
really well, incredibly we were doing about 15 13 14 15 million turnover we were started out in the beginning you would you know design a jacket like this and you would order 50 of them or 100 of them what was happening by that point is i was ordering so you, you you write down you've got 15 shops this is how i used to order for reese when i worked out when i was a kid whatever so you'd work out each each shops and then you'd put them into tiers so there'd be out of those 15 stores there would be five that are selling four times as much as the other stores so that they would be your tier one and then you'd have a tier two of another five and then you'd have tier three of another so you'd write down you'd, but you'd end up ordering 500 of this jacket mm -hmm. and then it became a but that's just this jacket then then there would be this t-shirt then there would be this scarf then there would be a leather jacket then there would be and you, you, you'd have to order like you know 200 300 400 500 pieces then you know they would come in some things would sell out in a weekend i mean we we used to have shop managers ring me up on a saturday and say I would guess how much we did this week, <laughs> today. Like, I'd be like, I've no idea. Go on, you, you, I'll have a guess. I'm like, well, I don't know. You did what? You, how much did you do last week? They went twenty-five grand. I went, well, which was a, you know a lot of money to, on a Saturday in a shop in Birmingham or whatever, you know. And uh, and I'd go, oh, I don't what twenty-seven? No, twenty-eight? No, thirty? No, thirty-five? Keep going. <laughs> Fuck it. How much did you do? Keep going. I'm 40. Keep going. No way. There's no way you've taken over 40 grand today like that, mate. We've took fucking 52 grand wow. like that. But I'm like, Jesus Christ. Most people would be jumping up and down with joy. I was like, how the hell am I going to keep this up? You know, I'm ordering 500 of a jacket now and 1,000 of a jacket now. And, I, and I've got... You know, you're ordering it, month, you know, two months, three months in advance. So I've got, I'm juggling all these balls. And it's, it became quite stressful, became difficult to sleep at night, um, which I never, you know, I'm just a normal, you know, I come from a council estate in Dundee. I'm kind of like, all of a sudden, running a fucking business, 15 million turn. I've got to order a thousand leather jackets of this. And, and then you, that's not enough. You've got to order two thousand. You're like, gee, what, they don't want them anymore. I mean, little did I know that that biker jacket that I designed 25 years ago, they're still selling couple hundred, you know, 500 a week. Or whatever, have one sense. in this house. <laughs> yeah, you've got it. And it's, yeah. um, but it was stressful. Mm -hmm. And uh, so somebody came along and said to me that they would take all that stress off me. They would run the business and I could just concentrate on design, which is what I wanted to do. I, I just thought, wow, this is amazing. Uh, that'll be a, such a relief. I can sleep at night. That was Stuart Trevor, creator and founder of All Saints. I'm your host, Maria Vorostovsky, and I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe or follow button, and I'll see you next week.